Hello everyone, welcome to the Physiotherapy Tutorial channel. In this 10 minutes tutorial series, we are going to talk about the peripheral nerve injuries. Peripheral nerves are categorized under the peripheral nervous system. This nervous system connects the central nervous system that is the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. In this diagrammatic representation, we are going to show you the spinal nerve emerging out of the spinal cord. A part of this nerve from dorsal root ganglion to the terminal part of its innervation is called as the peripheral nerve. Now cross section image of the peripheral nerve shows that the outermost layer is called as the epineurium which encloses in a tubular form a group of axon bundled together called as fasciculi. This fasciculi are covered by a connective tissue layer called as perineurium and single axon is covered by endoneurium. Now remember this three layer this will help you to understand the classification of the nerve injury at the end of this video. Now within the fasciculi and the spinal nerves are the collagenous matrix which is called as the fascia. This fascia helps cut to compartmentalize the system, also allows for the smooth gliding and sliding of the nerve fibers. Now let's take the individual nerve fiber that is also called as the axon. Length of the axon is covered by the myelin sheet. Myelin is the layer of the fatty insulating substances which helps to protect the axon. Now this myelin sheet is not continuous. It has a gap. These gaps are called as the nodes of Ranvier through which the solitary conduction usually happens for the faster conduction velocity. Now who forms this myelin sheet covering over the axons. These are formed by the cells present in the peripheral nervous system which is called as the Schwann cells. Now let's discuss about the functional unit of the nervous system that is the single neuron. A neuron has a cell body with its terminal projection called as the dendrites and one single long tubular projection from the cell body that is the Exon. This particular exon has the myelin sheet covering over them, which forms the gap in between called as nodes of Ranvier for the solitary conduction so that the conduction between neurons are much more faster. Now, myelinated exon in the central nervous system that is in the brain and the spinal cord are made up of the glial cells which is called as the oligodendrocytes. Whereas myelinated axon in the peripheral nervous system is made up of the Schwann cells. So that's the anatomy of the one neurons. Many such neurons collectively form a group which are bundled together in one connective tissue which we discussed was the fasciculi covered by the layer called as perineurium. So, group of axon forms fasciculi. Now many such fasciculi are wrapped in connective tissue the outermost layer that is epineurium. So these peripheral nerves are classified into two categories. The large myelinated nerve fibers and the small unmyelinated nerve fibers. The small unmyelinated nerve fibers are responsible for the autonomous function plus pain whereas large myelinated nerve fibers are responsible for muscle, touch, pressure as well as pain sensation. 
So injuries to the peripheral nerves are usually classified into three categories based on the extent of the anatomical structural damage to the peripheral nerves. So based on the severity of the damage, these are classified into neuropraxia, exonotomesis and neurotomesis. So mild to moderate to severe form of the peripheral nerve injury. Now let's talk in detail about the most commonest neuropraxia which is often seen in general population as well as in the sports athletes. Patient of the neuropraxia often complains of the temporary loss of motor plus sensory sensation. Now this loss happens due to the damage to the myelin sheet which is temporary. Now this temporary damage happens due to the blockage which occurs because of the compression or any kind of blunt injury to the peripheral nerves. The most commonest example of this neuropraxia is the sciatica where the sciatic nerve gets impinged or compressed in the tight piriformis muscle or it could get impinged externally in the narrowed intervertebral foramina because of the degeneration of the spine. So that blockage restricts the conduction of the nerves. However, there is no structural damage in neuropraxia. Whereas in axonotomesis, you will see that the outermost layer of the axon, that is the endoneurium, gets disrupted. So major internal frameworks remain intact. However, the layer surrounding the axon, that is the endoneurium, gets damaged here because of which there is a loss of motor plus sensory plus some autonomous function. Now this hypersensitivity is due to the large release of the acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. The next injury is the most severe form that is neurotomesis happens due to either nerve contusion, sudden stretch or nerve laceration. Now in this, the covering over the fasciculi, that is the perineurium plus the axonal sheet gets damaged. So there is a discontinuity in the entire framework of the nerve fibers. So these are the peripheral nerve injury. Following are the grades of the peripheral nerve injury. Grade 1, neuropraxia, simple blockage. Grade 2, axonotomesis when the endoneurium layer is discontinued. Grade 3, neurotomesis when the perineurium layer is disrupted. Grade 4, the outermost layer that is the epineurium is disrupted. And grade 5, when the complete transactional injury to the peripheral nerve. Hope you like this information. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.